I used to get really cut up about this, but I haven't done anything. That's just the state of boilers today. Oi, oi. I'm going Reading, Guildford, some little town near Portsmouth. Um, well, it's not near Portsmouth, in between Guildford and Portsmouth. So all the jobs I'm doing today are LPG. I don't know if I'm going to be able to film any of it, but if I can, I will. It's two repairs and one service. I'll catch up with you in a bit if I get anything filmed. Get this drain, get that pump, get that out. It's in there. And then I've got a turret seal still up here. It's leaking a wee bit. And then safety check, it's a GA bloody nightmare boiler. So here we go, one of them nightmare situations. I've just changed the pressure gauge on this boiler. I've had the power off while I do it, obviously. Now when I put it on. No display. Fan just runs. All right, so what you need to know here is that any of these fans that have uh, low voltage and high voltage connections, if you turn a boiler off and turn it back on and that fan runs constantly, okay, you'll probably find your PCBs failed because on that type of fan, the 240 volt is always there, okay? And that's what turns the fan, and it's the low voltage stuff that actually controls it. So if the low voltage side of a PCB fails, okay, you won't get the control of the fan, so it will just run constantly, and you'll also get no display, okay? So that no display issue is an issue with all boilers, and that turning the power off and turning it back on and having a fan run constantly and nothing else happen is always the same causation, okay? It's the PCBs failed on the low voltage side and is unable to control the fan or usually give you a display. All right, same problem, same as my mum's house, which as we all know, I fixed that boiler quite easily. Uh, now you're gonna see how I fix this boiler. So in the time this has been off, the board has failed. And these, this, these customers are in their 90s, I would say. And it's a Baxi GA, you know, it's not a very common boiler. But, you know, these things happen. I used to get really cut up about this, but I haven't done anything. That's just the state of boilers today. So I'm going to try and get this going now. All right, so just like my valent, that I was worried that I'd turn the power off and it wouldn't work. This is the same, and we're going to heat these capacitors up. Uh, all the ones around the switch mode power supply, we're going to warm them all up and then turn it on and see if we get display. Luckily, the customer had a hairdryer because I don't carry one anymore. And this does happen, there's nothing you can do about it. When it happens, it happens. Usually this is the sort of thing that happens Christmas Eve though, so, you know, could be worse. <laughs> Fan stopped. We've got display. Alright, so, sorry I'm out of breath here, right. <sighs> okay, so I know the questions a lot you'd be asking are things like, why does heating a capacitor make it work again, okay? So when you heat a capacitor, it temporarily increases its capacitance, okay? And what's probably happened on this back seat is the capacitors that smooth out some of the, um, some of the voltage going to the switch mode power supply startup chip have failed, okay? So the capacitors aren't doing their job and it's the, the chip doesn't start okay so nothing happens no voltage switch mode power supply hasn't kicked in and hasn't started working therefore nothing works by heating it you temporarily improve the capacitance of the capacitor for the startup 
it then starts up and once it's started the capacitor is no longer used to keep it working so what will probably happen with that well what does happen with that is that boiler will be absolutely fine and work flawlessly until someone turns the power off again it's that simple so by warming them up you increase the capacitance that gets it to boot up and start now once it started i have had this before as well where it seemed to have some low voltage up. i'll tell you another really good sign uh that you need to warm up capacitors is something that seems to be boot looping i call it boot looping i don't know where i get that name from if i'm honest it'll be a video somewhere along the way but when i say boot loop looping i mean like if you turn a boiler on and you get uh like let's just call it a like a Worcester Green Star Junior, okay? You turn the switch on and that boiler sort of springs to life. You know when they first turn on, they run the fan for a second. So that boiler runs the fan but dies. And then runs the fan but dies. Runs the fan but dies, like boot looping. That's what I call that. That is a similar thing. And if you leave that boiler running the fan, dying, running the fan, dying, running the fan, eventually it will warm up the capacitors itself usually and start to work. Uh, but you can speed that up by warming it up with a, with a hairdryer and away it goes. So that's why they often fail. Now, the failure mode is slightly different on different things. But on one of the on the original Ecotech, you'd get CON written on the display. So you'd go around, you'd service that boiler. And um, you'd go and you'd service that boiler. And you'd get CON on the display and it wouldn't work. That's the same thing. That's exactly the same thing. OK, it's all capacitors, all failing, causing the same problem. Now, I talk about this a lot on valence. Uh, that's because that's where I learned about this. OK, I took the time because I work on enough of them that I could measure voltages, take 40 PCBs, take them home, look up the stuff that's on a PCB. Because every chip on there, well, I'd say 80 percent of all the chips you find on a valent PCB, you can find a data sheet for it online. Uh, there's also lots and lots of electronics videos out there that will teach you how to diagnose electronics. A lot of the capacitors that fail that I've noticed, a lot of the capacitors that fail on boilers, in my limited experience, they seem to either, if they haven't got the capacitance they're meant to have, okay, so the capacity is off when you measure it uh, with a multimeter, then they're clearly failed. I've taken like six capacitors off a PCB before and then tested them all and they all test out fine with a multimeter checking their capacitance. But then when I get an ESR meter, they fail. So an ESR is a um, is a meter that measures equivalent series resistance, okay? It's a special type of meter. Uh, and what it does, so with your normal multimeter, it sends out a small uh, voltage or current DC uh, out through a circuit and it back to itself and it measures the difference in what it sends out and what it gets back and that's how it can tell you what resistance or how many ohms resistance there are across something an esr meter is an alternating current so it sends out alternating current uh, i think about 100 uh 100 megahertz i think my one is um so it sends out an alternating current and it measures the resistance using that okay because if you measure a capacitor with DC, it will be open line. So if you use a normal multimeter, it'll be open line. Okay, it will have no resistance across it, like an open circuit. Uh, but with an ESR meter, you can actually measure the the equivalent series resistance. And if that goes high, the capacitor won't work properly. And that is what I find. The capacitors that measure out okay, when I check them with an ESR meter, they failed on the ESR side of things. So I found an awful lot of capacitors cause an awful lot of problems. Uh, and just no one's... Look, you have to get into electronics. If you want to be a gas engineer and you want to fix stuff, you've got to learn electronics. There's lots of lots of channels out there that will teach you. Um, I've definitely... I know some people that are very good at electronics and I do phone them. I've run things by them because the last thing you want to do is put the wrong thing in something and cause a problem. Okay, so... Don't go into it. A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Okay, so I don't ever do anything I'm not 100% sure of. All right, but uh, as you see, I've got that boiler up and running. Done a actually, I actually got a GA set up quite quickly, uh, and I was on my way to my next job. Unfortunately, 
I didn't film any of them. Well, I did. I filmed one of them. I can't find the footage currently. I thought I'd packaged all that footage together with this job, but when I imported it, it wasn't there. Uh, so I'll have to look back through my phone and see if I can find that. Uh, but anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.